Hey YouTube, so today we're going to take a look at setting up site aggregation within your Citrix Cloud account. And you might be asking yourself, well, well what is site aggregation and why is this important? Well, think about it from a workspace perspective. So if you are utilizing, let's say, Workspace Standard, which is that portal experience where you can bring in all of your SaaS apps, and you're already a Citrix customer with Zen app or Zen desktop, you might want to bring in your virtual apps and virtual desktops as well. So you have a one-stop portal for all of your applications and desktops. So you can have your SaaS apps, your Citrix virtual apps or desktops. And of course, if you are a Citrix files customer, you can also display that as well. So first thing first, you're going to want to log into your Citrix cloud account. And once you're in here, you're going to go to resource locations. And here we're going to add a new resource location. So you'll see I already have a Ryan's lab there, so I'll call this Ryan Video Lab for the video. And what you'll notice here is I need a cloud connector. So I can download it right from here, then I can move it over, over to my VM that I'll be installing the cloud connector to. But I've already done that, so I'm gonna bring out my Zen server lab here. Let's undock that so it's easier to see. And you're going to log in here. And it's super simple to install a cloud connector. So you might be asking yourself, well, what do I need a cloud connector for? This is basically your, your connection. It's an outbound connection into your Citrix cloud environment. So it's going to be all over an SSL connection. And you'll see as we actually install this that it'll show up automatically and Citrix will take care of everything for you from the cloud connector standpoint. So after the initial install, you really don't have to do anything for it. Citrix will, will do everything. It'll manage this, it'll update this. But what you will see is once we install this, so if you have multiple resource locations, you have to specify which one. So what I'm saying is once you actually install this, it'll appear here as one of your cloud connectors, but we will receive an error or a warning if we don't have at least two in the environment. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have at least two to ensure that uptime. So let me connect to my other host here. And let me see, actually it's this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to proceed with in installing my cloud connector on my second VM that I already set up. So you see here, this is running on a 2012 R2. You can run this on a 2016, not a big deal. I don't believe there's any like really important prereqs when it comes to the actual cloud connector itself. It can handle quite a bit of connections depending on the sizing you have for this. All right, so that's installing here. We have, let's choose my resource location, so we have this installing as well. Don't need that open. And let's close this. And what we will see is eventually once this is done and it's connecting, it's gonna go ahead and show me that I have my cloud connectors. Um, one thing to note as well, what we're going to eventually need to do is if you're using an on-prem Netscaler, you're gonna to wanna to go to your Netscaler virtual server and change your SDA. So rather than using your actual delivery controllers as your STA, you're gonna to wanna to specify your cloud connectors. So I'll go ahead and, and add one now, just so you can see what that process looks like, even though I'm probably just gonna use a gateway service, but you might not necessarily have that available to you. Uh, I just totally used the wrong IP address right there. 131. 131, CTX. Uh, I'm totally, what am I missing here? I'm going to copy and paste scripts. Yep, that looks good. Let's find that. And we should eventually see that as an upstate. 
So right now it's testing server service connectivity back to your Citrix Cloud account. And then it should be doing, oh, number two is actually already done, oddly enough. So let's refresh this to see if it picked it up yet for that one. So a lot of cool services are available. Actually, we see both of our cloud connectors there. And this is just one of many. I think there's a, a lot of benefits when it comes to, to workspace, when it comes to even an existing Citrix environment. So they even announced over at Synergy that we're now gonna have ability to use performance analytics through your Citrix cloud account for existing customers as well. So you can be more proactive monitoring your performance of your environment. So things like how long does it take to, uh, to log in? What's your ICA round trip time? That kind of stuff, we'll see an actual performance score. And we can take a look at that in the analytics platform. Um, but that looks good to me. So let's move on to the next step. We're gonna click the little hamburger on the top left and get a workspace configuration. And we're going to go over to sites. And let's go ahead and add a site. So you have the option of using 7.x or 6.5. Of course, we're using 7.x in this case. And you'll see right now it's trying to discover the site. And here is going to be the IP of your delivery controller. It's gonna ask you to authenticate with your administrator credentials on premise. So you'll see mine's already cached there. And of course you could add multiple controllers here once this is actually set up. And success, they found the site. There's my domain, rhyme.local. And here's the option where you can use a traditional gateway. I have the gateway service, so for ease of simplicity, I'm gonna choose that. But remember, if you are using the traditional gateway, just make sure you go to your gateway and configure the STA to point to your cloud connector. And you'll see now mine's mine showing up, the 131. So just make sure you do that. And then save and finish. And just to make sure, so you'll see here under service integration, that my on-premise site is disabled. So we wanna actually go here. We wanna make sure this is enabled. So we see the on-premise site on our cloud account. And what should happen now is when I go to my, my actual user URL, I should be able to authenticate with my on-premise site. So I'll use my Ryan credential and I should see now all of my on-premise resource that I published out via my studio console on-prem. One thing to note with site aggregation, you will not see, or you'll not be able to use Azure AD to authenticate. Um, but oddly enough, I do not see my applications and desktops. So let's find out why. That is enabled. We have our site here. Let's double check our site. And maybe it's just taking some time for that to appear. Yeah, all my accounts are there. So that looks all good. We should be able to see this. Maybe I'll try authenticating with a different account here. See if that works because I want to show you guys what that working experience actually looks like easy way for me to tell and it's been really slow logging in here it isn't normal yeah here we go so you'll see I now have a desktop tab so these are all my desktops that I publish out via my on-premise studio and then you'll see here I have more applications than before I have my SAS apps as well but also now I have my on-premise virtual applications. So really simple to enable site aggregation, extremely powerful 
especially if you are a Citrix standard customer or, or workspace standard customer where you're looking to transition to the cloud and you want to run those environments in parallel. So this is a great way for you to do that, to have both running side by side. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment box below. Happy to help you out, answer those questions, and hopefully um, this has been an informative video. Thanks, guys.